All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's such a pleasure to welcome you to this presentation. We'll be talking about the transformative role of artificial intelligence in personalized learning. In our rapidly evolving educational landscape, addressing the diverse needs of students is becoming more crucial than ever. So today we will explore how AI can help us meet this challenge by creating learner personas and designing targeted learning experiences that engage and support every student. As we mentioned before, this is being recorded and it will be available at a later date. So we're excited to share our insights, strategies, and examples of how AI-powered personalization can enhance student engagement and success. Your presence here underscores a shared commitment to leveraging innovative technologies to improve education. So thank you again for being here. And we will dive right in. My name is Calista Dawson. I am the Learning Experience Design Manager here at LAPU. I work with the amazingly talented Digital Learning Solutions team, and I have the pleasure of managing the team that develops the content for our courses, both curriculum and media. Understanding our learners is a huge part of the work that we do, and I'm very excited about how artificial intelligence is helping us achieve a whole new level of personalization in our course designs. And uh, this is Brett. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am Brett Freeth, and I am the manager of institutional research here at LAPU. Um, I have a team of two data analysts who I like to consider as data scientists. Um, in the institutional research department, we are responsible for most of the external and internal data reporting. Um, we help sort through and understand where our data is coming from and help others with finding and understanding what the data says. Um, we, also help to, uh, we also help to use data to solve problems in the university, which of course involves usage of artificial intelligence to bring solutions previously unknown or unavailable. Um, so with that in mind, we did wanna go ahead and ask, um, I know AI is a hot button uh, topic right now, but we wanted, and there are lots of different ways it's being used. Um, we wanted to ask what you're currently using AI for. We have a couple different uh, options here of things that you're doing uh, or that common usages of AI, but I wanted to ask how you use AI in your daily life or if you think you don't use it at all or maybe you don't know that you use it. Feel free to uh, add that into the chat. I'm actually really curious what kind of answers we're gonna get today because I know it's kind of all over the place still. Some people are very hesitant to use it. Some are early adopters. Yeah, We've got think... one that says, I use it daily. <laughs> see, other brainstorming, revision, and more. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Brett? Um, yeah, I think there's a lot. It's used behind the scenes a lot more than people would know as well. That's true. OK, <laughs> one person shared personal writing and brainstorming. I use it to help me come up with jokes. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I use it in my courses, machine learning, good. Teaching, brainstorming, writing, summarizing, interview, and panel transcripts. That's a good one. Ooh, panel you know, automate. Yeah. I use it daily to brainstorm, get suggestions, revamp my thoughts, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. Games I play on my phone. That's interesting. I use it daily as well. Allows me to become more inspired when I hit that writer's block. Ah, yes. My team loves to talk about how it's so helpful with writer's block. Um, Yvonne threw Spark out there. We will talk about Spark later. Um, so stay tuned for that. And then we've got one more that says data and learning experience, idea development. Those are all really exciting answers. And I can't help but notice nobody said they're not using it at all. So I think we all have a shared interest here <laughs> yeah absolutely all right we'll start over here all right so in today's educational landscape classrooms are more diverse than ever before this diversity includes differences in cultural backgrounds socioeconomic statuses prior knowledge and individual learning preferences such variety presents a significant challenge for institutions and educators who strive to meet the needs of every learner. Traditional one-size-fits-all education often falls short, leading to disengagement and uneven academic success. 
To address these challenges, the concept of personalized learning has emerged as a promising solution. Personalized learning tailors educational experiences to individual students' strengths, needs, and interests. This approach has been shown to enhance student engagement, motivation, and achievement by providing more relevant and meaningful learning experiences. When students see their unique needs acknowledged and addressed, they are more likely to be invested in their learning journey. However, implementing personalized learning on a large scale can be extremely daunting. So this is where AI can come into play. AI offers powerful tools to analyze vast amounts of data, identify patterns, and create personalized learning pathways for students. Through AI, educators can provide customized content, real-time feedback, and adaptive learning experiences that are responsive to each student's progress and needs. By leveraging AI, schools can achieve personalization at scale, ensuring that every student has the opportunity to succeed in a manner best suited to their individual learning needs. Um, so when we're talking about the power of AI, uh, you have to think about the background of that and the amount of data that's collected in today's world. Um, I was doing some research prior to this, and I, I found one user who do who used a Google takeout, uh, which essentially pulls all of your data that Google, Google has collected on you. And they found that uh, for their location data for one month, um, it contained over 20,000 lines of code for just their one person's location data for a month. So now here at LAPU, we don't have the capacity nor the capability to do anything even remotely close to that kind of data collection. Um, but I think there's a use to collecting some data on our students, and it allows us to try to solve some problems. Um, I think there's this general fear around data collection, and I think some of it is absolutely warranted. But here at LAPU, our main goal is to help and care for our students and to provide tools to help, their, uh, to help our students um, succeed. And in that space, AI is a game changer for us. Um, we have lots of different type of students' data, right? Uh, we have their demographic data, we see their activity, especially with everything we do is online. Um, so if you think around our students, every time they click or every test score, every assignment, there's a treasure trove of data um, for our students that we can use and help us to understand what our students are going through, right? So using um, AI, we can analyze a vast amount of student data um, Things that include, like I mentioned, demographics, their age, their grade level, their family background, um, their learning activities, what they're spending their time on assignment wise, the type of resources that are being used, their online interactions, um, of course, performance, whether that's grading or test scoring or quiz results. Um, but AI provides an analysis that can help us uncover uh, hidden patterns and trends that is basically impossible with the naked eye. Um, it's nice. It provides us essentially a magnifying glass that allows us to see the bigger picture and understand our students on a whole new level. Um, specifically LAPU, that's exactly what we're doing. We're, we are using AI to better, to better understand our students, um, where they're succeeding, where they need help, what might be going well, and what might need adjustment. Um, this is information that we would have never previously had the time to go over and discover manually. Um, but the ability of AI to analyze vast data sets and provide analysis on that um, is crucial and is a great reward for our time invested in it. So this is where a, uh, AI can really shine for a smaller scale university like ours here at LAPU. Um, so really the beauty of AI in education is just helping us move beyond the average student. Um, traditionally, we would look at uh, overall class performance, uh, but AI helps us to understand on a much deeper level um, down to the individual. So with um, analysis and with uh, AI analysis, we're able to really understand our outliers. So where are students falling well outside the norm? And that's not just in performance, that's in many different aspects and helps us to provide targeting support or targeted support to those students, making sure that none of them get lost or left behind. Um, but also then after that, it helps us provide a tailored uh, solution to them. It helps us to specifically know what the student is struggling with or what they might need help with and provide a very specific response to that. So it's been great. It helps us provide a personal, like essentially a learning coach um, that analyzes our student data and everything. So in, it's helping us move away from a one size fits all um, and provide a much better individualized uh, learning experience for each student. Awesome. 
So with that, we're going to start talking about what are learner personas. So with all that data that we can gather now and analyze with AI, what are we going to do with it? How do we move towards the actual implementation and design of the personalized learning? Learner personas are the key to that. They are detailed research-based representations of different types of students within a learning environment. They encapsulate various attributes such as demographic information, learning preferences, goals, motivations, and challenges. Creating personas can be extremely tedious and time consuming, so this is where AI can speed up the process. Here at LAPU, we've been using Google Gemini, and so for today's demo, I just went over to Gemini and asked it, what data points should I include in a student persona? So it very quickly generated this breakdown of the, the basics of things that should be included in a persona and things you need to consider when building these out. And so from there, I plugged in just a little bit of that demographic information that we have. So for this instance, our average student, um, I asked Gemini to create a learner persona for a 35 year old Hispanic single mother on a single income who works full time and needs to finish her bachelor's degree. So it created Isabella Garcia. If you can quickly skim over this, I know the text is a little small, but she's from Phoenix, Arizona. She has a desire to finish her degree in business administration. And it has come up with different challenges and pain points that she's wrestling with. Some of her learning preferences. She desires a flexible deadline. Self-paced learning is ideal for her. Um, it even generates a quote that might be something that this student is thinking. So in this case, it says, I know this is going to be tough, but I'm determined to finish my degree. I want to be a role model for my child and show them that anything is possible with hard work. So it really quickly was able to take that little bit of data and turn it into a, um, a person that I can empathize with as a designer, as an educator. So because we need more than one learner persona in order to really excel in this area of personalized learning, I said, okay, let's create another one. Use the same demographic information, but now give it different context and challenges. So it generated Sophia Rodriguez. She's from Miami, Florida. She wants to earn her bachelor's degree in marketing. She has a different set of motivation, challenges, and pain points. She prefers a structured program with clear deadlines and lots of help so she can stay on track. Uh, her quote is, I'm a little nervous about going back to school after so long, but I'm ready for a change. I want to find a career that I'm passionate about and that uses my talents. So just two really quick examples. It took maybe 30 seconds to come up with these. So you could see how easy it would be to generate lots of these in order to be inspired in your design process. The primary role of learner personas is to humanize and contextualize student data, transforming abstract information into relatable profiles that can guide educational strategies. This approach helps us better empathize with students, ensuring that the learning experiences we create align with our learners' actual needs and preferences. Creating a learning experience with an actual person in mind completely changes the decisions you make during your design process. And this can also have an impact on the enrollment and coaching processes as well. You could create any number of these personas as you attempt to build an experience that is completely student-centered. The advantages of using AI-powered personas for learning experience design include data-driven insights, speed, and personalized learning paths. AI is, a, is great at taking data and identifying distinct learner archetypes. This data-driven approach ensures that learner personas are based on accurate and comprehensive insights. AI is fast. It can continuously update and refine these personas as new data becomes available, ensuring that they remain relevant and precise. AI-created personas can also help inspire personalized learning paths, pinpointing those specific student needs, strengths, and areas for improvement. This enables the creation of customized content and learning activities that are tailored to specific needs. The impact AI is having on personalized learning is very significant. The ongoing developments in tech are enhancing our ability to cater to each unique need. 
a few of the possibilities included in tailored learning paths, um, adaptive learning, and also automated feedback and support. AI can analyze a student's strengths, weaknesses, and learning preferences and goals in real time. Based on this data, AI-powered platforms can create personalized learning paths with adjusted difficulty levels and recommended materials. AI can adjust the learning content and pace in real time. If a student struggles with a concept, that AI can provide additional explanations or exercises. Conversely, if they grasp the concept quickly, AI can present more challenging materials. And then with the tutors, AI tutors, they can provide that immediate feedback and support on assignments and answer the student questions on a 24-7 basis. This frees up teachers and faculty to um, focus on more of the complex tasks and those individual student interactions. All of that to say, AI for personalized learning has the potential to improve student engagement, motivation, and their academic achievement. It's important to remember that AI is just a tool and that teachers remain crucial for creating a supportive and inspiring learning environment. The ideal scenario here combines human expertise with AI's data-driven capabilities to deliver that truly personalized experience. Yeah, so I love that Callista mentioned that AI is just a tool. I think sometimes there's this misunderstanding that AI is going to provide us all the answers. It's going to tell me exactly what's going to happen and how that's going to work. Um, one of my favorite examples I like to use when especially looking at predictive analytics, which is personally one of my favorite usages and, and ways to use uh, data and use AI, is to say that I cannot tell you whether you are going to win the game or not. We're going to use sports as an analogy here. But I can tell you that if you put Steph Curry in the game, you have a better chance of winning. And that's a general analogy I like to use when discussing data, how it's used, especially around predictive analytics. So um, one of the cool parts, I'll explain really quickly how it, it works. I mean, a lot of what happens is what I mentioned prior is that we're taking a lot of data from our students, anything that we can to help assess whether our students seem to be doing well, whether they seem to not be doing well. So of course that has to do with their past performance, their engagement patterns, and then any other external factors we might be able to have. Um, specifically, a big one is obviously change in behavior. Um, but by analyzing these trends, we can help, or AI can help us identify um, any patterns that might indicate future struggles, right? So for example, a student who historically struggles with a specific topic, um, might be flagged when they're heading into a class or something like that, um, that would allow us to be, uh, keep a better eye on them. Right. So that predictive power allows us, uh, uh, as educators, as support staff, as whatever we need to, to, to uh, focus and, uh, intervene early if we need to. And again, like I mentioned before, targeted support is crucial just to help our students, right? These types of trends are not easily seen. And honestly, a lot of the times the student might not even be aware of them themselves, but having that predictive help to help point out where there are trends that might not be noticed um, is extremely useful. Um, the biggest thing is that it really can be useful to help make sure that we have fewer students falling through the cracks and that uh, we have more students on the path to success. In Speaking of that, one of the big developments we've had recently at LAPU is our addition to our personalization efforts, um, including what we have coined as Spark, which is our AI course assistance. And this is an intelligent tutoring system that's powered by Nectar. And these are in every single course here at LAPU now. We were able to very quickly implement this technology. Um, our awesome tech team just got to work and trained these assistants on each individual course. And so this is a, a quick little demo video of how it works. In this demo, you can see my colleague Mike Wilde demonstrating the functionality of one of the course assistants. This is in our ISTU 101 course. As you can see here, these AI driven tutoring systems simulate a one on one instruction providing personalized guidance and feedback similar to a human tutor. These systems can engage students in interactive dialogues, answer questions specific to the content of the course they're currently taking, and provide explanations tailored to the student's current understanding of the course material. 
So this personalized attention helps in addressing specific learning gaps and reinforces their knowledge. Um, one of the things that we've been most impressed with is that we were able to train each one on the syllabus, the instructions for each assignment discussion. Um, we even took the scripts from the media projects that we put into each course. We fed all of that into each individual course assistant. So any question the student might have about the content, this tool can answer those questions. And it does so in a Socratic method way where it's asking questions to uncover their current understanding. It's not just feeding them generated information. But that being said, Brett, would you be willing to share some of your experience in using Spark in your courses? Yeah, so full disclosure, I am a uh, MBA student here at LAPU. Um, and this uh, tool en enrolled while I was in school, I was obviously as it's very recent. Um, and now while other language, large language models like Gemini and ChatGPT have been helpful. Um, I was originally a bit apprehensive, full disclosure. I was nervous about using it. I just thought, well, how useful is this going to be, really be? Um, but after a couple of discussions with some colleagues on the usefulness of it, um, I started to dive in and thought, okay, well, if this is a tool, it would be uh, just not smart of me to use this tool that can help me to better succeed. So I started using Spark to help me better understand my assignments. So when I got an assignment, I would simply ask Spark and say, hey, can you break this down for me? Help me understand this assignment. Um, what do I need to be doing first? What do I need to be doing next? What, what are the steps? And it gave me a very tailored breakdown and a very uh, easy way to understand the assignment, which was extremely useful. And then from there, I thought, okay, well, let me test the limitations here. Let me see what else I could do. And I said, okay, well, let's look at step one break down just step one, what should I be doing here to better understand this assignment? And Spark was able to give me a very expansive list on all the different um, different aspects I should be taking into account when looking at just step one of this writing assignment, saying, look at the historical data here, take a look at what was done in the past, see if you need to change this or make a difference here on the assignment. Um, and it's quite fascinating and was extremely useful. Um, these large language models like ChatGPT and Gemini are great and they do a really good job, but they don't know what you're looking at and they only know what you put into them in the sense that if you ask them a general question, they're gonna give you a general answer. Um, but Spark was really able to help direct me in the exact right direction I needed to go, which was honestly, and I'll be completely honest, it worked a lot better than I thought it would. It worked mm -hmm. a lot better. I was really impressed. Um, and it has been extremely helpful. So um, I don't have a ton of student interaction, but I've tried to, where possible, share the usefulness of Spark because it is quite impressive in how well it's helped uh, understanding just the basics, but also helps you understand the goal of where the class is. And I think that's one of the great parts of it, being trained on all the material from the courses. It understands what needs to get done, but also understands where your end goal needs to be. So like Calista mentioned, when you do put something in saying like, help me understand this concept, it will ask questions to get a better understanding of where you are so that it could better direct you towards where you need to be um, filling in the gaps as opposed to just doing a one size fits all um, learning or one size fits all answer. Um, it's been impressive. Thanks for sharing that. I know in looking at a lot of the feedback that's been pouring in from our other students who are using it, I, I've seen a, a wide spectrum of feedback. So there are people who are still apprehensive, like you mentioned, in using any sort of AI. And then there are others who felt encouraged to use it by their, their instructor and were equally impressed with its ability to nudge them in the right direction or bring clarity to something that was extremely confusing to them. And overwhelmingly, the, the feedback we're getting is extremely positive. And so it, it's just given us the confidence to, to continue in the direction that we're going in. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about the, the potential benefits. So I'll start with just the increased engagement. That's something I'm extremely concerned about in my role. I I love that this tool can personalize the learning experience and make it engaging as it's aligning with their, the student's interests, um, especially a tool like Spark. It's, it's 
directly answering that question of what is the student interested in and then keeping their interest, right? So it leads to higher motivation and more active participation on the student's part. Do you want to talk about outcomes a little bit? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, our improved outcomes, it, it helps us to, it tailors instruction and supports to help our students understand the outcomes better and then just achieve higher um, academic performance, right? So that's a great part of Spark is that we're really looking to just make sure that our students are reaching a better spot, right, with their learning. I mean, I, I spoke about that earlier. Our, our goal is to help support our students as best as possible. Um, and that seems to be a uh, a very strong use case for Spark. Mm -hmm. And then for efficient learning, um, the personalization of pacing and targeted content, it enables students to learn more efficiently. Um, the AI helps them spend time on areas that need improvement and helps them to more quickly advance through the concepts that are being grasped. So that adaptiveness. I know, like I, I've seen my students or, um, or even my children who are using adaptive AI technology at the K through 12 level. And it's really fascinating to see them going through, say, like their math curriculum. And, oh, I've memorized that fact. I get to skip ahead to the harder stuff now, you know? So it's that that adaptiveness that's really cool. And um, I hope to see more of that in the future because it's such a cool uh, benefit of using AI tools. And then for equity inclusion, um, I think that AI has really addressed this need for equity in a new way. I think it's a new way where it's bridging that learning gap on an individual basis. Like you don't have to bend over backwards to think of new ways to bridge these gaps because the AI can do it very efficiently. Um, it supports students that are from diverse backgrounds, ensuring that every student has access to that high quality education that's tailored to their needs. I'd also say on the equity inclusion, I think beyond, it also helps provide students who learn differently. I know I've heard from instructors who say that some students, as opposed to asking a question of their instructor to learn or to maybe better uh, understand if they're not sure on something, they will just say, okay, that's all right. I'm just going to get this one wrong because they're so afraid to ask or don't want to bother the instructor or whatever the case is. Um, and this allows students to ask almost in a, in a judgment free zone, right? You can ask whatever questions it is. You don't have to be afraid of under uh, people seeing where you are learning wise, this will help you get to that uh, goal. And so from like an equity and inclusion standpoint, I think it's great helping students with different learning styles, or maybe different starting points come and reach to the same goal. Yeah, that's such an important point, because a tool like Spark does provide that safe space for each individual student to ask those questions that they might have never raised their hand to ask if they had been in a classroom setting, right? Um, I always tell my kids, you know, ask the question because you're probably not the only one thinking it, but it's still so intimidating and we're very likely not going to ask the question. We'll probably go home and Google it and hope yep. to find the answer. But here with a tool like Spark, you can ask those questions and no one needs to know and you're going to get the answer you need in a very short amount of time, which is really cool. All yeah. right. Anything else you want to add on that? Nope. I think that's it. All right, so I know that was a lot of information, but we're gonna go ahead and move into a Q&A. We've already got a few questions in the chat. So if you are sitting on a question right now, go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, the first one I'm seeing here says, is Spark Online, can anyone use it? Um, so the ones that are individual to our courses are only available in each individual course. However, we do have one version of Spark that is public. It's in our public writing center. And so it is programmed and trained to be a, a writing tool. So it's trained on APA. Uh, it's trained on just general like academic writing skills. And so I've actually used it in my writing where if I, I was working on a research project, I would copy and paste my my thesis into it and ask for feedback and it would break down for me what was good about my thesis as written and ways that I could improve it 
Um, I've even asked it like, am I citing this source correctly? And it'll tell me not quite. Here's how you could better sort, uh, cite that source. And so it's been extremely helpful. And yes, that is available to the public. Um, I don't have the link on me right now, but I think it's just the LAP Writing Resource Hub. And if you Google that, it, it should come up. Let's see, there's another question here. How can Spark mitigate the fact that different teachers have different preferences for assignments, even if instructors are following the same syllabus? Um, do you have any thoughts on that one, Brett? Yeah, well, we actually had an answer to that one. So we do oh. use, at LAPU, we use standardized rubrics for our courses. Um, so each instructor teaching a given course will follow the same exact rubric. Uh, rubric. Obviously, this does not eliminate the subjectivity of individual assessment practices, but it does provide a common standard. Um, we have not trained Spark to recognize instructor preference. Um, I'm not sure if that's something we will do in the future or not, but it is a good question to ask. Um, and I think, but Spark knowing the entire rubric, uh, we do have quite an extensive assessment process to make sure that all of our all of our learning is being achieved at the uh, level and the uh, specific learning outcomes are being achieved. So we do follow through quite extensively on that to make sure that the um, the learning outcomes are being achieved as the course or the syllabus says they are. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to train Spark to recognize different instructor preference or anything like that. I'm I don't know, but that's a good um, question to ask for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting thing to consider for sure. We have another question saying, what percentage of students are using Spark in our courses? I don't have a specific percentage um, at the ready, but what I can tell you is that we've had an amazing influx of feedback. And so just seeing the amount of feedback that we're getting, it's very encouraging that students are using it. And we are still actively creating communications and resources to inspire and encourage students to use it if they haven't already. Uh, like we've mentioned, it, it's still pretty new. So I'm super encouraged to see how many people have adopted it early. And we are constantly looking for ways to um, enhance the adoption rate. Yeah, so we have another question that says, uh, what key items do you forecast seeing in the growth of AI in higher education within the next 10 years or so? Um, I think personally, I think I would love to see an AI tool like Spark, but trained on the individual student, right? So every time the student submits an assignment or submits some sort of writing, that your personal assistant is trained on that. Um, and we can get so much closer to the idea of having a very personalized assistant for you. Then when you have the goals and you have the starting place with the assignment um, or you have the starting place of the student and you have the goals of the assignment, Spark can help bridge that gap for each individual student, right? We're getting a lot closer to the sense of a one-on-one -on -one tutor. Um, I think that would be a logical next step to help our students very specifically, right? Because while I might ask questions and it may generally understand what the difficult parts of an assignment are or the difficult uh, learning outcomes in, in the syllabus are, um, understanding where that student struggles specifically saying like, Hey, you've grasped these five out of these six topics perfectly, but number six, you're off base. Let's dive into that one a little better. Or maybe it's just a student who understands the topics really well, but doesn't do so well with the writing aspect of it. Um, that's another part I think that we could move forward towards. And I hope that that would be the case where we're getting a lot more personalized help, um, in the future. That's a great answer. Um, there's a question, let's see, how can you tell if students are using Spark to just do their assignments for them? Where are the boundaries of the assistance given? I, I know we've touched on this a little bit, but I think the, the way to know that um, they're using Spark, a, we want them to use Spark, right? We're giving them full permission to use it because we've provided it to them in their course. Um, we hope they are using it. and. As mentioned, it's it's designed to function in a Socratic way, so it's not going to just generate a paper for them like ChatGPT might. And so, the I would say the boundaries around the assistance given is the way that the the assistants are trained. They are trained very specifically on what's in the course already. So it's information they already have access to. They might just be struggling to understand it on their own. So. 
I, I don't foresee an issue with it generating their papers for them, their assignments for them, but it is really intended to, to keep pushing them in the right direction and helping them overcome those knowledge gaps. Hopefully that answers that question. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know if everyone can see this one, but there was a question about Spark being used in different languages. Um, and the answer was yes, users can ask Spark to translate questions and content into other languages, which is very, very cool. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Will Spark have voice capacities? That is, can Spark listen to our questions like Bing does now? Um, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I would imagine that Nectar uh, is going to be working on things just like that because they are um, still developing their product and adding new features. I would not be surprised to see something like that become a reality. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a good idea to pitch that if they don't already have it on their roadmap, we should think about that. <laughs> yeah. All right, do you have any final thoughts, Brett, as we move into wrapping this up um yeah i think i just want to mention with spark i think it is really provided um an opportunity to bridge gaps right our our courses are eight week sessions they're pretty fast and uh as an instructor mentioned to me not that long ago a lot of our our learning in our courses is scaffolded right so we start here with abc and you continue to build on that through a very I mean, let's be real, a quick pace in just eight weeks that you're expected to learn some things. And so when there's a missed concept that can be detrimental in weeks that uh, in the following weeks in your course. And so I think with Spark, it provides you an opportunity to understand where those gaps are and you can go back and say, oh, okay, I might have missed this part. But instead of feeling very herky jerky in the learning from one to the next or whatever the case is, Spark allows you to have more of a, a steady flow of learning um, and to continue with concept and conceptually understanding what builds upon what um, better. And especially because of the segmented time of like, you do a, you do a one paper one week, then do a following paper the following week. It might be a little bit confusing in your head to understand, you know, okay, well, what's building upon what? Um, Spark helps to, to bridge that gap. And I think that's uh, a really useful and important tool um, that will only get better. Yeah. One thing that I think would be interesting to the group here, um, we are exploring the concept of offering Spark as a personal assistant for each individual student. So that will be the next iteration that we're working towards, where instead of it just being individual course-based assistance, it would be student-based individual assistance. So taking that personalization to a, a entirely another level, very granular, very personal to the individual. So that's something we're working towards and we're excited about. Um, so can't wait to be able to share what that impact is once we are able to launch something like that. Uh, I'm sure we could have another webinar all about that once we get there, but that is the direction we're moving in. So something to be excited for. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We look forward to bringing you more content in the future. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any more questions or ideas on how we can utilize this awesome technology in the online classroom and continue moving towards a more personalized education experience for our learners. Have Thank a you, everybody. <laughs>